Hey guys, welcome back to Big Mood. Look at who we have here today. Woo. Beautiful, luxurious, amazingly elegant, bomb ass looking <laughs> Nikki Blaze. I put, in, I put in hair for you guys today. I wanted to make sure I showed Dang. up looking good. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to make sure extensions. I showed up looking good. Yeah, I gave you all them Yay. inches. She gave us a lot of inches. All and them back. inches and y'all didn't even ask for it yet. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me. No, oh my God, I'm so happy you're here you know we've had you on JK News, but now we get to have you all. We get to, to have ourselves. you all to ourselves. I was waiting without yeah. the stupid boys. <laughs> You're always on a show with a bunch of stupid boys. Lot, oh my god! <laughs> a lot <Yo>. of your <laughs> life, <laughs> like a lot of your ass uh, like, aspects of life. I don't think I've ever been on an all female panel we need to come on here more often. Yeah, yeah. yeah love to have you. I've hey. never been around this much estrogen before. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Happy. Is it okay? I was like, is it more scary? Because we had um, oh, some true. guests come on that were not used to being around a lot of girls, and they were very nervous coming into like a set with a group of girls. That's they were how like, I is felt. it going to yeah. be awkward? Yeah. Were they male or female? They were female. Female, female yeah. Um, I get the intimidate. Like it is intimidating, especially we. I mean, we've all hung out before yeah. mm -hmm. in different settings around a bunch of other dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've already had the it's ice. Different, yeah. It's very different. True. And I could see how it could be intimidating. I mean, we've talked about it um, mm -hmm. when it comes to just like looks and being around other women oh, yeah. and feeling secure. But since I've already been around you guys, I know. I was like, oh, I can actually like get dressed, look vibe. cute. Yeah. And vibe and not feel like, oh, they're going to be like, this bitch really yeah. showed up. <laughs> I was like, yes. Who I, does she think she I was is like, with all that hair? Yes. I was like, first off. <laughs> with all those inches I I lost all of my inches and you're going to bring them to me. I was like, we can borrow it. I will share my hair with you. It can come off. That's a yeah, true that's friend. That's so great. Mm -hmm. It actually probably matches your hair more than mine. I, I was going to say, it's like, uh, it's like a... Ombre. No, it's more blonde. It Mine's really like though. way pale. My hairstylist is going to be pissed. She's like, this bitch wore the wrong hair. <laughs> it looks great. Thank you. I feel like yeah. it I don't it know good. a lot about hair, but it looks really great. Thank you. You look pleasing to my eyes. Every yeah. time she's on news I'm just like oh my gosh you're just so Tiff pretty has to a look crush. at <laughs> <laughs> you got it you and then also the no stuff that comes you out of your, your mouth and like the stuff that's in your brain I'm like oh my gosh she's so beautiful on the inside too jeez I love sitting next to Tiff it's <laughs> <laughs> like oh no keep <laughs> don't compliment me any don't more. stop stop oh no, my goodness stop. you care no, about what no. comes out of my mouth and not what goes in it yes <laughs> jeez let's talk about that okay let's yeah. go. you like that segue <laughs> that I goes, do that what goes in your mouth on I a normal basis Nikki food Blade? lots of yeah. food I know you were talking about um, like your dream growing up like her dream job was to be a food critic yeah oh See? shit you're not That's, far from it I'm yeah. not far you could totally do it right now working on it yeah. what's I, your favorite food like type of food mm. like from a food critic i i hate that question because it's like yeah such a yeah. basic like what's your favorite color what's your favorite food <laughs> my favorite color is blue, <laughs> I love blue. but like a, if, as someone that wants to be a food critic mm -hmm. i have uh i'm assuming you've tasted a lot of food tasted a lot of food i really like seafood so all mm. different types of seafood and Ooh, i think yummy. that's the base because that's the one aspect that is consistent, but always very different depending on what culture you're in. True. And I like pasta, but I don't know as much about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. By default, Japanese. All day. Hell yeah. Sushi. Every type. I want it raw. I want it alive. I want yeah. like any way I can get it. I yeah. want it with, with Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can hang out. Yeah. We're going to eat together. Yeah. I want to be fat. I love Nikki sushi. Nikki loves fish. Oh, yeah. Both yeah. Nikki's yeah. Nikki's love fish. Over here. I've been thinking about it. Yeah. I've been thinking. What, what's 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 holding you back? Come to the dark side. <laughs> I, I, we got fish here. <laughs> I, I feel like I don't have good quality fish around me. Mm. In think, LA, it's too hard. Wait, I think. Are you in the Bay Area? I'm okay. More inland. More inland. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I would yeah. be lying if I said I was in the Bay. I'm technically not in the Bay. Mm. And if you're from the Bay, you know the difference. You have to like specify it. <laughs> you have to <laughs> specify it. I'm not in the Bay. I'm um, technically what's the Central Valley? Mm, okay. And then even in the Bay Area, like fish is still scarce as far as mm. getting good quality of fish and I need to learn how to Almost cook like it. they got to go to aquarium so they probably have good fish. Monterey <laughs> oh does Mon Monterey which is is that bay is that bay you, Monterey mm. Bay aquarium I mean yeah, the bay, if the bay, bay is in the name yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the bay is in the name they got good seafood but I'm more of like I get the oysters mm. and the clams love oysters nice. what's your favorite kind of oyster uh, oh my god Nikki, are you I like the I like the date I was like the the I like how I get around her I was like, I love oysters. I tried, 
what are the Kumamoto's? The small oh, yeah, yeah. ones? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really I really like those. But if I get a big, juicy, a big a old, fanny uh, bag, like, you know what I'm saying? Big old, I don't even know the name of them, but the yeah. ones that you, when mm-hmm. you eat it, yeah. mm-hmm. on the grill, that's the on best. The on the grill? On the grill, wow. yeah. I've never, those I've on the, never oh, tried that. Never so tried that. good. Yeah, mm-hmm. huh. that sounds amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, for those of you that don't know Nikki, she is a like previous model, or do you still model? That's your your. I should. That's part of your resume, <laughs> modeling. I, sh- I mo- should. But more importantly, though, you're a radio show host, mm-hmm. a morning talk show host. Yes. And I'm actually curious about that career because it seems to be like a really male dominated industry. So mm-hmm. how did you like what was your experience in that? Well, I came in already having like a social media presence, the modeling background. I had done Wild and Out and a couple other yeah. projects. So already getting into um, what people would consider like on the lower side of media. They, they consider like really? radio on the lower side as far as right. enter- on as far as entertainment mm. goes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people start in radio and then work their way up. I kind of was like, oh, I'll go down. Like, <laughs> but I mean, but that's how a lot of people see it. Uh, most, You're like a big fish in a small pond. There, not. Uh, I wouldn't say it that way because okay. there are so many professionals in that industry, and when it comes to that field, I was mm. nowhere near a big fish. Like, it was more of I'm the wrong fish in the wrong tank. Mm. That's what it felt like. It was almost like I was like a fighter fish in a tank full of goldfish. I like how we're still on seafood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nemo. <laughs> but it it just felt. Um, awkward initially and it wasn't more of being a woman in that industry it was more of being younger and then coming from a different industry yeah Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of women that are in um radio Mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of older men Mm -hmm. uh people work very hard to get into the position that i fell into Mm -hmm. so i know for me i can't take that for granted like i can't at all say i was a big fish and i came down it was i earned my spot but i got fast-tracked because of the other work that i've done Mm. and the men are it's 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 mainly an age thing. I think the age mm, was more of a yeah. problem than um, than gender. I relate to that for sure. I, before YouTube, I was in the hospital mm-hmm. industry, and in my my department, it was predominantly ran by women, but they were all way older than me. Yeah. And there was like this political thing that was really weird, where it's like you don't know anything, like you just you. I don't know. It's just zero respect. So I get yeah. it. I got in trouble for dress code working in radio. Oh wow! Yeah, what? It's very How? like traditional. <laughs> I didn't know because I worked at an urban hip hop station or a oh, rhythmic station yeah. and I worked the morning shift. So I'm like, OK, well, if I got to wake up and I'm pretty much coming to my workout clothes and it's just me and um, my other host, Lucas, which I love, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did it matter? But the women in sales didn't like my attire. And then Weird. there would be there would be a lot of. Ooh, yeah, catty. there was a lot of other comments and they were significantly Uh-oh. older. And just the area did it make sense for what I was wearing? Of course not. But I had such a different mindset as far as everybody's confidence levels being different yeah. and realizing that, OK, I guess there's a dress code, but I still didn't. I still didn't quite yeah. understand it. Yeah. Uh, my co-host was great. The men in that industry were were cool. It's more of the guests that were. Oh, you know, a lot of there was a lot of rappers. There's a lot of singers, and mm-hmm. everybody turns the corner when they're coming into the studio, and then they're like, "Oh, I wasn't expecting this on today's media tour," and they kind of don't know how to act until you throw out the cool card and then they're like oh she's not interested she doesn't want me at all damn wow. okay I'll stop now but Thanks. for the most Thirsty. part yeah. Oh, oh yeah is it because they're just used to it like everyone most of, after them? well most of the people like I said it's an age thing so most of the people early morning shifts are, are a lot older mm. and think about the people that were popping back in the day these are jobs that you keep for a lifetime like yeah. a lot of your favorite morning show people have mm-hmm. been there most of your life so you have grew up with them mm-hmm. and they're so amazing at their jobs when you see a new face on a media run you're like what like oh snap <laughs> Especially what's a hollow good thing like that. I had to st- I wore no makeup and started wearing hoodies and it still didn't still didn't stop dang wow. she's just but it is a compliment I will take all yeah. of them until they don't come no yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, I kind of get the age thing too, even in yeah. YouTube, because I feel like YouTube years go by so much faster. They're like dog years where like <laughs> the OG YouTubers, we started like 13 years ago and the landscape changed so much that I don't understand the new generation. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. Now it's the newer people being like, oh, you're too old. Yeah, exactly. Like That's what I'm saying. I am the older. <laughs> where it's like, wait, is that how I'm supposed to dress? Like, wait, that's how long I'm supposed to do my content. <laughs> you think you're you think you're old until you're around older people. 
Until around younger people now. No, you think, like, when you're around younger people, of course we feel older. Yeah. But then when you're around older people, they'll look at you and they're like, you're delusional. Don't think that. You're, I'm reminded uh. so quickly that I was like, oh, I may be like 31, Dang. but I'm young as shit. I got to join your industry then. Yeah. <laughs> you do, you'll come yeah, in. We feel ancient already. I think I'm young until yeah. I meet who's relevant. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm but, so old. Yeah. Like, to me, that's so crazy. On the other podcast, we, you know, because talking about YouTube mm-hmm. and the guys have been in, you know, you guys have all been in the YouTube space space for a long time for me I haven't been in that world so when I come around certain people that are older than me that like are terrified of discussing their age uh, worrying that they're gonna like lose lose um, viewers or people liking them or followers or something yeah. I think that is it's terrible because being in between like 31 is lit. I would not go back to 21 Dude, 31 is amazing. people think we're making it up and I thought I will admit, when I was 21, I thought all the 30-year-olds were making it up. Yeah. I was like, you're just bitch, you're saying that because you're old and you <laughs> yeah. want to feel better about yeah, yourself. True. But it's true. I feel like I look better. I feel better. You're more I'm confident. More com- oh, yeah. God. You my know, you know yourself you know me better. 10 years ago. I look whack as fuck. My, like, I look like a door. You could go to a bar and order whatever Every, fancy drink oh, you want. Yeah. You and got then all you, the experience. You don't have to wait for somebody else to buy you a drink. I think that's like, mm-hmm. when you start going out, you're yeah. realizing like how much you don't need other people. Mm-hmm. And that's can come that can come like in different ages. ages yeah yeah but it's that independence i remember being terrified at 27 yeah 27 was a scary year 27 28 because that's where it started to feel like what am i doing with my life mm. and then after 30 it started coming together more than i realized and then this last year was the biggest reality check ever and I think everybody had to experience it, no matter yeah. how old you were. Because yeah. if you don't get Definitely. your shit together now, you you are going to be left. So 31 was a great year, transition year. I love it. No, oh, that's great. And yeah. then also, because you, you had mentioned before that you also got out, out of a relationship this year too, right? Or was it last, last year? year? Yeah. Technically, the yeah. whole year. It, time goes by so fast. I can't it even does. keep up. Yeah. But do you feel like you've, like that was a positive experience for you? Like, because usually a lot of, breakups or you know changes in your own personal life in the moment you can see it as like oh no why did this happen or whatever Mm -hmm. it is especially if it you didn't call for it and then how how have you experienced now post post relationship yeah because i see you thriving girl thank you thank you well the relationship part i really kept on the down low i didn't really that was a that's also a major part of the issue in the relationship because discussing my relationship was something that I didn't really want to do because I felt like that person isn't in this world and whether it's good or whether it's bad there's always repercussions to talking about your relationship yeah, on true. on a public forum Definitely. so um since we since we broke up it's been better in the sense of not the guilt associated with why don't I do this or why don't I post that and I know my faults in the relationship and there became a point to where you have to look in the mirror and acknowledge where you can't give somebody something Mm -hmm. and I think that's the biggest takeaway is being able to own what I cannot offer or what I don't even want to try and offer and if I was to go down like the relationship road or like that particular road again the conversation would be completely different. First off, career-wise, my priorities are different. Yeah. I'm not as... We were fighting over what I think is stupid is the memes that he was posting. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and like and going and following people that I know that you've never met and like stalking other, like other girls' pages and feeling as... So the, you're in this business, but you felt like that affected your relation- view on him? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like for me, um, I mean, you know... Joe was my ex. Um, I feel like I would not give a shit. Like, because I'm like, oh, I get it. It's just all a game. This whole social media thing's a game. So it's like seeing who he follows or whatever, this or that. Like, it means less to me now than it did before I came to the YouTube space when mm-hmm. I was just a regular person. That would think have you really felt differently me. if the if He's, it was flipped. The person I was with is regular. Yeah. And he would do certain things to grab other people's attention and because he would do the same thing to me. Uh, so, so it's he, not worthless to him. So that's how right. he got he you. Was, right. So he was, mm. there There was weight in his actions. Uh, so it's not just that like. That does make more sense. Yeah. yeah. So he would purposely go and follow certain people or we had an issue with um, a particular person. And next thing you know, I was, I, you could piece together because his behavior was so repetitive that I was like, okay, you just followed someone new. It's a pattern. Mm. Okay. 
you just posted something real suspect. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just go looked at this girl's page. She posted the same thing. Oh, next thing you know, that's who you were messing around with. Uh-oh. So, yeah. so for me, he is not smart about covering his tracks. But, but for me, that's why it was an issue. That was an Good issue. Thing he wasn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. that but was like. People that aren't in the industry do treat it way differently right. than we do. I get that. Yeah. yeah. So he would do, and it was like, have you ever seen somebody post memes and look and and feel like you look at them differently because that's a little bit of what they're thinking? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of it was very. Well, I hope not because I post some fucked up shit just for. <laughs> oh, jokes. your shit's funny. Just for jokes <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah. yeah so talk about funny. being a massive whore and all this. Oh, stuff. No, no, no. That's like but a lot of it for me was talking about other women and like bitches ain't shit and they look oh, like this yeah. and girl sucking dick and all the stuff and I'm going like this yeah. and I'm going. Oh, I'm so glad nobody knows I'm dating you oh. because I was in. I became very embarrassed. You start internalizing mm, yeah. that, and then I'm taking it personally. Yeah. And then he's like, "No, it's not about you." But then you do certain things and you post things for it's me. It's about yes. women, though, and I am women, and, I, and, I'm, so and I am women, you. <laughs> and I love your mom. So there would be there was a lot of conflicting things social media wise. Yeah. But leaving the relation, like leaving that relationship, and it wasn't on the best terms, and still in a very like you know in a weird space because we shared a lot of a lot. Of time together mm-hmm. um so i also realized i had to back away because that's who that person wants to be and really at the end of the day like you said should i should i care as much about what they're doing online if that's what you want to do i can make it my own um issue to step away from it i can be like hey i don't like this i don't want to deal with this well if there was some patterns and he was actually yeah. messing well, i mean then yeah that's yeah. very valid <laughs> man i put two Woo, bitch, I, I may not be the best at math, but two plus two equals four. Yes, it does. <laughs> and it kept equaling four. Oh. And I was like, why don't you, sub- how about you subtract a couple things? And then he would, and then it would, be, it's kind of, it was very repetitive. But, right. you know, stepping out of the relationship and stepping back from it, I realized what I don't like. Mm-hmm. And for me, I don't think I could be with somebody that is very, um, that outspoken on social media, but doesn't want to own it. I, I mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. So he was just trying to do it for like to look the cool? attention. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Which, That's too bad. Which is yeah, it's different. But everybody has their own struggles, right? Like his identity crisis is his identity crisis. True. Yeah. And that's not. But yeah, that's just you a mismatch in right. where you guys are. Right. In different. Life, we're right? in different places. That's, yeah. That's what I learned in this time. Like the separation and over the past year and getting older Mm -hmm. it's like yo i don't have to keep trying to make something work if that's who you are as a person i should be able to respect that and either if i can respect it we work on my issues and then we grow together or Mm -hmm. we have to walk away why are we Mm -hmm. gonna we ain't getting any younger we can't force yeah Yeah. like i love them don't get me wrong and it's like one of my best friends but yo we are i will it takes me back to someone I don't want to be. Mm-hmm. True. You hit a certain point, you can't keep doing if that. Someone's shit. bringing out the worst in you. It's a sign. Yeah. 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 For sure. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. Have you been dating since that, or have you been keeping it to yourself? I'm pretty much to myself. I'm like, I don't. I got into a lot of arguments over wanting to be secluded and isolated and not really wanting to explore other relationships with people. I kind of got called out, like, why don't you want to spend time? And why and who then, said that? I'm, someone that was interested in talking to me. Oh, uh, that's someone, why. Yeah, They're somebody was, that, somebody was Yeah, somebody that was interested. <laughs> but I was no man. I'm a hot ass mess. I got too much stuff going on. Like, good I don't, for you for recognizing I'm that. A, and like, yeah. like, I want to work yeah, on myself. That's, first. that's great. I was going through that. Do I want a family? Do I want to? Do I want to work? Do I even like my job? Oh my god. Do I want to wake up every morning and do this? Do mm. I? Uh, am I happy with what I look like? Do I want to live here? Do I want to live there? There's too many questions that I had to answer myself. And I mm-hmm. wish more people knew that if you don't have a lot of those questions answered, you shouldn't entangle your life with the whole other oh, person's God. life. Yeah. yeah, Unless you want to be in that person's life and that be your life. I feel like that's what a lot of people I don't know do. If that's healthy though. It's not. Oh, yeah. we're, not, we're not saying it's healthy. Yeah, I, like okay. to, <laughs> I like to drink a lot of alcohol. We know it's not healthy, yeah, but I'm yeah. still going to do it because <laughs> I, I like being fucked up. Yeah. But no, you're completely yeah. right. And it shouldn't be a problem to step away. Like, yeah, because if you don't know yourself, then you don't know where to put boundaries. Facts. That's mm-hmm. so true. And then you keep fighting and you keep running into these assholes, which I think a lot of people call other you know women or men assholes but in reality you're just an asshole yeah and you don't want to recognize that person you know yeah like you saw it you were able to deal with parts of it but you ignored ignored yeah and we all 
again, I think alcohol is such a great analogy for it is because mm-hmm. we like we enjoy it to a certain extent. But then what are we going to be mad at the alcohol for getting you a hangover? Like, right. you know exactly what you're doing every time you sip it. Yeah, you should. Water what, can be right there. Yep. When you know your limits, you know, like, oh, I got to stop at two. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hangover right. or whatever. Right. Um, but if but you that keep, really comes from experience, too, though. Yeah, yeah it even comes from experience. Yeah. That point yeah. where you can I can only yourself. see a fuck boy twice. After that, my feelings get hurt. Mm-hmm. It's cut off. <laughs> then you are no, then, <laughs> then it's like, okay, now I know why I'm here. Yeah. Then you can be a little bit more honest about, like, we know why we're here. What am here. I really doing? Because mm-hmm. like, sometimes you can just go just... This is what it is. Like, you yeah. know, like if we just like to do it, we like to do it. If we actually like to hang out, we like to hang out. And if I decide to fall in love with you, then that's my fault because you already told me yeah. what it was. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know exactly. what was I have open. fallen in love with, though, recently? <laughs> Third yeah. love. Third love. Third love. Third love. Quick oh, ad break. I got it. You got it. Yeah, girl. my titties Sorry. are. My, my titties the are. The reason why I thought bra. I had it is because <laughs> I'm wearing it. Me too. <laughs> I'm wearing my. I need one. <laughs> it's awesome, bro. It's actually the These most comfortable com- bra I have ever it. owned. And uh, I, I feel like people, we've said this out a million times, so I guess people know by now. But in case you didn't know, like, I didn't know I was, I didn't have a bra that, fit, that didn't fit me. Yeah. Um, most women don't. Yeah. Because yeah. you go to, you know, I'm not going to say the name of the brands, but there's like big brands that we all used to go to and they don't really have a custom fit they're just kind of like a generic one size fit, well, fits all <laughs> so have you ever had like the gap between that was my problem oh. i hate that me Definitely. too and then also after a while my straps would fall off and it was just a mess but i thought oh that's just how bras are but they don't have to be that way mm-hmm. with third love you can find the exact fitting bra for you and they have so many different sizes um you, so you go online and you take a quiz it takes you like sec- 60 seconds sex 60 seconds <laughs> sexy seconds. sexy and seconds. we're back <laughs> <laughs> and then it helps you identify identify your breast size and shape there's so many different yeah. shapes i didn't know boobies could go so many different ways <laughs> and then you find styles that fit your body so they have a perfect fit promise if you don't love it every customer has 60 days to return it returns and exchanges are free and easy and then third love's team of expert fit stylists are dedicated to helping you find your actual perfect fit and fit stylists are available to help via chat or email and i like that their returns actually go if they have gently used bras they'll go to women in need which is awesome. They're donated. Um, and then uh, your bra should have comfort and quality with signature details like the memory foam cups, no slip straps, scratch free brand. You know, it's just going to make sure it fits your boobies. Mm-hmm. So Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. Right now, they're offering our listeners 10% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash big mood now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 10% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash big mood for 10% off today. Woo. Yes, cricket titties and an unfitting bra are unacceptable. You know what else is unacceptable? Mm. Crooked ass teeth. That's fixed. right. Mm-hmm. Our friends at Candid can help your crooked ass teeth get fixed in a very <laughs> short amount of time, usually less than a year. And uh, all from home, too. All from home, yes. You don't have to go, you don't have to worry about being in a dentist every week or every month or I don't I never have I mean I have perfect teeth naturally so I don't I don't know what I don't know what you guys went through Show to off. fix your teeth Show but- <laughs> you could have teeth that look like that yeah, there too. we go candid clear aligners are comfortable removable and totally invisible unlike those ugly ass wire braces so you can transform your smile without anyone noticing plus your treatment is prescribed and monitored remotely by a licensed licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement with candid your treatment includes remote monitoring Mm -hmm. by the same orthodontist who created your plan so you'll never have to wonder how you're doing and you'll always know the average candid treatment is just six months you'll start seeing results way before then and it costs an average of less than 50 percent than the major competitor invisalign Um, start straightening your teeth today right now all of our listeners can save 75 dollars on candid starter kit Go to candidco.com slash mood and use code mood. That's candidco.com slash mood and use code mood to take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit. Candidco.com slash mood. Code mood. Mood, mood. Y'all are good at that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Real professionals. We just do the same. We get the same. We have, we've had the same sponsors for a while. so we And we do like our sponsors. Yeah, so we kind of like. We do. It just comes out naturally. Yeah. yeah. It, seem, like, it no. seems like. We I've, don't have any like weird sponsors, you know, like some off the wall shit. Oh, yeah. I've, I've really done like, like car speakers. But I, <laughs> again, I've had, a, I've, like, I've had to cut commercials before. I, the one thing I hate doing, especially because we were talking about radio. Mm-hmm. I hate cutting commercials because it never feels like I'm genuinely talking about something because I haven't even seen the product yet. Oh, for some, Like in yeah. some cases, you know. 
yeah. most of these you guys are actually wearing the product. We you're get familiar like samples with it. at least of it. Yeah, we get to try yeah. it. I was like, y'all did that real smooth. Like you've like you're wearing it or you've done this before. I was like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> See, I think that's so smart. Like all advertisers should do that because yeah. when they can, we can tell that when someone's genuinely talking right. about yeah. something. Totally. And like, I'm like, if you're talking about a car speaker and you're telling me like, and I've oh, never the even had treble a... is ten yeah, percent. Yeah. There's like... there's nothing worse than reading an ad that somebody else wrote thinking you talk that way and yeah. then you're like I've never said yo this yo, yo, is yo, the most check out lit. these harming <laughs> right. speakers no that's yeah. not happening yeah. and that's then you're doing this live too right yeah Ooh. yeah I was live mon- um, Monday through Friday from 6am till 10am and yeah that is wow. live like is you- there any like difference of time where no, they can edit none, anything oh my god zero. there's been so many times where zero. We've, we've been talking and yeah. I've been like a can we just fucking can we just yeah. do that again like I can't imagine not having that yeah True. you get used to it I don't know I, I felt like I I have two different people right so when I go on I know I see it and boom it's there and then I do another I do another show on the weekends called The Basement mm-hmm. and that's um we have a lot of it's a syndicated show it's a Saturday night hip hop mix show mm-hmm. so we cut that before like we're not we're not in the studio yeah. cutting that live which I wish we did because that would just be so lit because yeah. um, my co-host is really bomb uh, DJ E-Rock mm-hmm. but when we when we do that, we have certain things we have to hit. We have certain points we got to cover. So it's like, oh, okay, we record it. Then they have to send it off to get edited. And then the editor has to send it off to get approved. So that's a whole other process. Wow. A little bit more like this. On the live show, have you ever fucked up or like... I've said fuck before. <laughs> oh, man. There's... <laughs> My co-host has been in the game for like 20 something years and everybody runs into those moments. And for the most part, the biggest thing that you learn about going live is not cussing. That's so hard. I could never. Not cussing. That's so hard. Being able to take your moment to process what you're going to say. Avoid ums as much yeah. as possible. That is the hardest hard. part where I'm like, what What are your tips to, to speak more articulately? Yeah, none of I us are like right amazing right at any of that. We <laughs> cuss a lot. There's I cuss, a lot of ums. Oh, I cuss a lot. All the time, but it's a different person, you know. You just put on your hat, like yeah. your your radio hat, and you just don't yeah. fuck it up. I feel like that's what it. <laughs> certain topics would get me hot. That's the, like the triggers, uh, and my co-host would purposely do things to, you know, incite a fight with uh-oh. me <laughs> because it makes for good radio. Yeah. And I will call you out. I, at one point, we were yelling at each other, uh-oh. but it's all in good spirit because we know yeah. when we're off the mic I know exactly what he was doing but one time yeah. I was like if you don't shut the fuck up I'm gonna get like, yeah. you know? I was like ah. and we just pray that you don't get recorded doing it yeah oh, that's it no. Th- that's it and when in doubt say the person's name that you're talking to if mm. instead of um oh well, that's a good idea okay I feel like so I've never consciously tried to stop cussing because I'm just like whatever. You guys don't I'm have just, to. Yeah, yeah, I don't there's, have there's to. No, it's I, not I have, necessary. But I have, I have tried be, to constantly because with the child you have to. Oh, true. <laughs> so I tried I, giving up for Lent once, and that was the only Lent fail I've ever had. I can. I just wasn't couldn't. the hot Cheetos that you said back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like everybody's Lent give up was hot Cheetos. Oh, in high school, hot Cheetos. It was but soda I, for me. So see, soda or hot Cheetos or <laughs> <It's> candy. <laughs> yeah, chocolate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I couldn't do that one. But um, I have. Um, I have consciously tried to stop saying um, and I notice it comes up at a higher frequency when I care a lot about trying to get the exact oh, information yeah. across. Yeah. Like when I really prep and like have all these notes and I want it to go perfectly, I'm like, wait, um, uh, so she was born. No, uh, she was born yeah. in this, <laughs> this um, state. I feel like ums yeah. are okay occasionally because you're having a conversation. We're not doing a proper mm-hmm. interview right now, so it's like you flow a lot more freely. Yeah, for me, I struggle flowing in an entire sentence i end up stopping myself a lot and i don't know why i do it and it's it all the, me crazy. it's all the drugs from your teenage years probably you know? i think i do got, have like some mis yeah. like synapse some misconnections in the brain Something. a little bit for some reason when the mic is on i'm a little bit more there when it's not on i'm like i forget everything i'm super forgetful how was your first day on live radio i want to know what that experience my co-host doing the morning show was different than doing the midday so i did the traditional route you do overnights weekends overnights middays morning and i did middays and morning at the same time and each spot has a different approach to it so morning you're 
talking to normally most so of the sorry. people that are taking. Oh, it's okay. You want to play footsies? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell me. I'll I won't, I'll take my heels off for you. <laughs> um, so so every everything is a little bit different. Middays, I'm talking about the song. Oh, yo, the next song coming up is da 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 by so and so. Tune in. We got the gossip at you know whatever is going on during the time. The mornings is more of a podcast format, kind of free speaking, and you have to keep in mind your target audience. Mm -hmm. The first day I did it, I had no real morning show experience and mm -hmm. I was filling in the the woman before me retired and oh. she had been in that seat for eight, like 18 years. Oh, that's wow. wow. They hated oh, me. It doesn't yeah. matter who you are. Oh, really, I don't think it would have mattered. They hated me. Yeah. They don't like change. Yeah, so no, really change. no real radio experience. I was six months into radio. I had only been doing radio for six months and I got a morning show seat. That's awesome. Whoa. Like yeah. how how was even that first six months though? Like what was that experience? Very different. I was like, this is cool. I didn't know how I felt about it. It was back where my family was. I thought it was dope that Was it live as well? Most of it was pre recorded. Okay. And then so when you had I had time to get into yeah. the flow of the rhythm. And then when I started doing the middays, you have to run a board at the same time. And oh, let me tell goodness. you, I was not good at it. Yeah. No. Definitely That's too much for me. There's a lot going on. So you see the jocks in there, they're doing yeah. there's all these mics and things have to run and Crazy. shit misfires all the time. So you're doing that as you're entertaining people? Yeah. <gasps> so middays, I didn't, I wasn't there for long and I don't think I was the best at it, to be completely honest. It's not my style. I wasn't def, I wasn't the midday person. So when I sat in the seat for the first time with my co-host, he didn't even prep me. I had no show prep. I had nothing. He's like, we're going to go on the mics. Three to the wolves. He was like, you're going to talk to me. And and him and I had already been speaking for a while, so it was very easy. He made it very comfortable for me. So my oh, first great. day, I just never looked back. Mm, well, I think great. if you have someone that's really professional, oh, yeah. it's almost like no matter who you are, they'll make sure you look good still. Yeah. 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 He filled that's in on good. all my gaps. Everywhere yeah. everywhere I failed at, he was like, I got you. Yeah. yeah that's like in improv, yeah. that's what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, like you're only as good as your weakest member. So mm -hmm. everyone should be lifting each other yeah. and support. He pulled our weight and on the technical side I've had to run the board by myself and running the board on a morning show versus any other time slot is not easy most professional shows have producers they have somebody that's running it so that you don't mess up there's a lot of money on the line you have advertisers yeah. you know there's a lot on the line oh I got left in there by myself <gasps> And I cried because oh. it was the one day everything went wrong. The power oh, no. went out. I couldn't figure out any of the. I I I cried, and I had to call my co-host. Who that sounds like a nightmare? It yeah. is. A, it was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. And I was working my first time, like as an adult. That was my first real job. Yeah. Oh wow. As far as yeah. being in an office, so having stressful. having things, I go show up at work and nothing. Uh, decided to work that day, and I cried in the studio. But I you cried. know, you went back, and that's amazing yeah. because if yeah. I had cried and been under that much stress, I probably would have showed up the next day. And oh, I wow. told him that he is not allowed to leave me, and nobody left me yeah. in the studio by myself <laughs> yeah. ever again. It was that's okay. Good. I was like, yo, my strong suit is not this. I can talk, but <laughs> yeah, doing. Don't don't make me I want. press the buttons. Oh. And there's a lot of buttons. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that you have no control over. You can press the button for it to go, and an engineer has to come in and be like, "Oh no, that's not working." Oh no. Oh yeah. It sounds like a nightmare. It was, but, but it sounds like a great learning experience. And look yeah. how, how much stronger you came out of it. I still don't great. know how to work the board. I should have learned, but I did it. It's like when you get assigned dishwashing duty, and so you break the dishes. You're like, "This isn't for me." That's exactly. That's Someone exactly what I wash the dishes. Sorry, my boss at the time had to come in because I wasn't to be trusted in there by myself. <laughs> They're like, "She can't be crying on air." She's like, "We we can't have her in there. The songs aren't running." But you probably get way more listeners. Like some people, like, "Do this girl's having a breakdown?" Yeah. <laughs> One hundred one point two. The listeners yeah. in the morning, they they. They got a kick. The ones that stuck around got a kick out of me being on there. And the ones that hated me, they, it was, yeah. I could just imagine, like, the radio co cutting in and out of, like, you pressing buttons. <laughs> and you're like, ah! And it, like, cuts to, like, some car commercial. And then oh. you, like, end it early. So it's, like, oh, no. it's like a Which sound bite. Which I button? have no idea. It was bad i was off the air i cried i had to call my gm in it was it was a, it was a shit show i was a mess i'm definitely not qualified <laughs> to run the board i'm okay and i did exactly that and he never left me in there by myself again they're like nah she's no well that's good no it was great i yeah. never, I never had it was like the first experience so it wasn't like yeah. oh the first time it was so smooth and now they trust oh. me with too much responsibility no. oh yeah they, they kept their expectations real low with me i'll be completely <laughs> honest they were never blown away by anything how long were you all. there Three years. Well, two and a half years. I just quit. Ah, and what nice. was there? Was there any reason that you wanted to quit? 
There was a lot. But for me, remember the, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I in the right place in life? Where do I want to be? We have a pandemic. We had family. We have finances. There was just so many factors that came into play that Mm -hmm. either you step up and do what you want to do now or you sit in a position that you regret. And I had to take advantage of the opportunity and the time that was given to me. I loved it there. It was great. They were amazing. I definitely didn't want to leave, but it was the best decision for me in this time because I would probably be sitting 10 years from now in somewhere I don't want to be if I wouldn't have walked away. That's great. That's great. I'm all about listening to your gut on that. Mm-hmm. And your mm-hmm. instinct. So many people don't like you know. You talk yourself into, oh, logically, like I have a secure position yes. here. Maybe my gut's telling me this isn't for you, but like, but like it makes so much sense or a, whatever. A paycheck or a any residual income is one of the biggest creative um, killers. Like creative, like creative. You know what is the word creativity? I was like creative, creative. Y'all were complimenting me like two seconds ago, and now I can't even say creativism. Yeah. I didn't even notice creativity. until you said that. I was like, oh, she was trying to like, I just tend to make killer. Yeah, I tend to make eye contact to distract people when I'm fucking up. So if I just look at you deeply, that's what's going on. The words not coming out of my head. Uh, but the consistent money was making me go I'm too safe can I do this and that was really the biggest problem I was having I was like I can live a completely different life right now I can settle down Mm -hmm. I can look towards having a child because for me I wanted to take off a year of work if I could take off a year of work do that be in the home have my family be as close as possible probably stay in the valley not move to the bay area not move to LA and I could do that in the job I was in. I could live that life, but did I want that life? Will I regret not pursuing it while I still have the chance? So mm-hmm. I had to make a decision and I wasn't creative. I felt completely blocked in everything else I was doing. Nothing else felt fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even the money. It was just like, okay, I can pay my rent, but what am I doing? I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah. That was the biggest thing. I was not happy and not creative at all. There was no hustle. Yeah, when you're mm-hmm. a creative person, and you don't have that that joy filling your cup every yeah. day like you really feel it more mm-hmm. than people that are just like hey i'm just here to work and get a paycheck and stuff you, yeah when you're creative you're just like i am gonna die like it like, hurts your my, soul my, it hurts yeah. your soul yeah, where other people don't really feel that They're right like, other people are like i just want to you know work and this, take and go home go there's home. a little yeah. i envy those people a little bit a l- yeah right i do i envy those people a little bit because they're sure of themselves mm-hmm. that's the goal to be mm-hmm. sure of yourself to do what you want to feel secure right. in your decisions. Yeah. So for those people that are going to work and they're very happy with what they do mm-hmm. yeah. and they get their paycheck every month and they live the life that they want to live, there's nothing wrong with oh, that. Oh, yeah. I'm not I coming hate, down right. on those people yeah, at all. I hate, mm-hmm. I hate when people shit on them and they were like, uh, you don't want to be an entrepreneur? No, bitch, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> that literally is not possible for everyone to be right. that. Right. Yeah. Uh, even just logically, like entrepreneurs need workers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, exactly. You can't shame the people that need to yeah. fill those positions. But a lot of people would hear what you're saying right now and be like, whoa, you gave up that, like, you could make money, you're talking, like, you're doing something cool, but, and you would have been secure, and you gave it up because you weren't feeling creative, (laughs) and, like, and so I was just trying to, yeah, like, defend creative, like, but also, in making that decision, I put six months worth of rent on the side, able to pay all my bills, invested my money, yeah, you made it in a wise, yeah, I mean, this wasn't a, oh my God, I'm miserable. I need to quit my job. It, yeah. was, it was like, no, credit score is correct. Dental is, dental is yeah, all yeah, taken yeah. care of. I went <laughs> to the doctor. I was like, because a bitch ain't going to have health insurance next month. So yeah. let's get all <laughs> these things checked off. My smart. rent, I've always lived and my parents gave me a lot of financial insight. My mm-hmm. grandma put me up on game and they're like, you can do whatever you want as long as you have six months worth of rent. That's right. Yep. You can do That's anything it. you want. You're mm-hmm. anything at all. You can go anywhere. If you have six months worth of money, yep. your life can completely change. You, can, you have plenty yep. of time to actually transform or switch over to whatever yeah. career. Six months is a good amount of time to yep. like get your feet wet into something and, and st- and I think that's great. Yeah. We just had a finance episode. Yeah, and, we did. and the last question was, <laughs> how much do you have an emergency fund? And it was six months. Yeah. 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 Six months. I got it. I put that to the side. I worked on my credit. That was one of the things that I was doing. Mm-hmm. I made sure I had solid credit because, mm-hmm. you know, cash only gets you so far. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you don't have money coming in, you got to have good credit. For the, I mean, you guys had a financial that's episode. Right. Yeah, you exactly. know what's up. Like, if you don't have a job, you don't have 
credibility. And if you don't have good credit, then they're looking at you like, what do you got? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, gotta have collateral to put on the table. Right. So I had all my ducks in order and all in a row. And then I was like, okay, cool. I gave my month. I did my time. I tried to go out as gracefully as possible and to make sure that it was cool. So what's next for Nikki Blades? Like, what does, like fill your cup are you still kind of like Jeez. I'm gonna figure this out yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah I'm here this helps actually yeah. a lot yeah, this helps go. a lot I've been wanting to come here the, the so podcasting so welcome the newest life. member of Big Moon <laughs> hey. I tried to, we're missing a few members anyway if you want. <laughs> I, I feel like I've integrated myself into JK too I'm like yeah. how do I get into all of yeah. these things I want to be on everything oh, yeah. we're trying to get her to move here okay guys yeah. no I'm Just working on here. it when Tiff was on, when Tiff was on no when I came on JK News mm-hmm. and we had talked about Big Mood yeah I was like can I come on? I really want to. Yeah, because I was like, because I yeah. ended up inviting her, and then that she ends up going like, "Really, you want me?" I'm like, "Are you Dude, dumb?" We like, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely, we want people yeah. on. Like, I, I don't think it's. I, I, I think we felt the same way. Like, will she come on? Yeah. Like, yeah. Does, does she want to come on? I know. And she, when she was like, "Are you, are you sure?" I'm like, yeah, "Wait, are you sure?" Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you, you want me as much as I want you? Right. Like, can we, can we exactly. hang out? Perfect yeah. relationship. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to hang out like, with you guys. This, like no, this is like one of the perfect transitions into what I want to do is hanging out with you guys. Yay. Hang out and eat some food, perhaps? I yeah. love, actually, Nikki Street Eats is really the passion project we that we've go. been talking oh, about. So yeah. it's all connected. And you're going to tell me about how I can get some food? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what maybe Street Eats can go on to a delivery service, Ooh. perhaps. Uh, currently, DoorDash Ooh. will bring your food right to your door it's just like in the name and if you want to eat from any restaurant you're feeling we were talking about seafood Sushi, earlier Korean, Sushi, Korean Indian there's Japanese. over I think 300,000 restaurants is it on here it's not on here anymore I know it by heart it's 300,000 restaurants <laughs> or Jeez. more that are on, or, more, plus, or yeah. more now maybe they added more uh, a lot of them are still open during the pandemic so it's the, a great way to support your local restaurants if you don't want them to uh, you know go out of business because they're losing a lot of that like walking clientele you're like mm-hmm. hey deliver it to my door uh, ordering it's easy you just open up the DoorDash app choose what you want to eat and your food will be left safely outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop off setting you can support all all the all the faves Chipotle <laughs> Wendy's <laughs> we need Gina Wendy's <laughs> <laughs> right now our listeners can get five dollars off and zero delivery fees on their first order of fifteen dollars or more when you download down loud <laughs> the doordash app and enter code big mood that's five dollars off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the doordash app on the app store and enter the code big mood don't forget that's code big mood for five dollars off your first order with doordash and while you're waiting for your food to arrive, you can be playing my favorite mobile game, puzzle Best game. Fiends. That's right. Best Fiends. I, I'm sure you guys are annoyed of me talking about it all the time because I genuinely love this game. <laughs> like, insanely. I've been playing it for many years. Honestly, I love this this game because it is a puzzle game and also the fact that you can play this without wi-fi or any type of service is my most favorite thing about it because sometimes i live like in my new house there's these weird like dead zones where sometimes i don't get any service and i'm just like what do i do i'm well, gonna so bust kill all your data exactly. hey, how am i supposed to play this on the toilet when there's no wi-fi yet exactly. but you can see with best fiends because you don't need no wi-fi best fiends is the binge worthy p- mobile puzzle game with over 100 million downloads, <laughs> are you good? Yeah. <laughs> With over 100 million downloads and counting, it's free to download and it has literally millions of five star reviews on the Apple App Store and Google Play. More levels, events, and challenges are added all the time. So even with seasons, like they, they keep up with the seasons, so they give you new challenges. The way that you get to play this, though, is you collect these little fiends, and each fiend has, like, a special power, and then you're using these powers. Like, you have to be strategic in how you use them so you can defeat the slugs, and that's what you're trying to do, defeat those slugs. slugs. And then advance in the levels. And honestly, like the graphics on this game is like really breathtaking ba- uh, graphics. I've never seen a an app game that actually has graphics. Yeah, that they are all look this shitty nice. usually. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that that just adds to the the fun. At least for me, I'm I'm an aesthetic kind of person. Aesthetic queen. <laughs> <laughs> So seriously, once you download Best Fiends, boredom won't stand a chance. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. 
Yeah. Yes. I love games. Wait, so what's Nikki's Street Eats? Oh, you never, that's pretty much why Tim and I are friends. Oh, Cause shit. Because we, like <laughs> we like to eat. So, oh. so Nikki's Street Eats, I started, oh, I want to say about five or six years ago, right after I did Maxim. So I did Maxim Magazine. Did, did I tell you guys know that right? Mm, so no. that's why I was like modeling something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Maxim is huge. Right? Maxim, that's I was awesome. so they had the hometown hottie competition. Yeah, remember that mm-hmm. where they named the top ten hottest girls in America? I think yeah, yeah. I was one of them. Tight. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So, so if you haven't yeah. been watching this on YouTube, you've just been listening <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, you need better go check YouTube. out. You need to come check out the YouTube channel. <laughs> so it was named. Uh, one of the top 10 hottest girls in America, which was voted. That's and this so cool. is, thank you. Yay. I got a title. You can't call me ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call me ugly. There's, pa- it. there's papers to the prove title, it. We don't need the proof. It was a democracy <laughs> and she was voted. <laughs> I was voted. But it was cool because during that time, Maxim was highlighting Instagram. And that's kind of how I got into the influencer mm-hmm. world. And it was a lot to do with personality. Mm-hmm. From there, one of the main things that I did, I, my intro video, I like slid in on a countertop in like Superman underwear and what? I was eat- yeah and I was eating cereal and watching cartoons in my submission video. Nice. From there, I was obsessed with the Carl's Jr. commercials. Mm. And you know oh, how yeah, they had great commercials. The really sexy yeah. commercials and for me, I've always been a big eater. I love food. I grub, I throw down like you could leave me by myself. I don't care. I'm eating everything. <laughs> like first date, we're not getting salad, boo. You better yeah. bring your wallet. Nice. Yeah. Cuz we are eating everything. Yeah. My type of woman. So I never understood why there wasn't anybody that looked like me in those commercials. Mm. I never understood why there wasn't anybody that looked like me in entertainment and in general, and especially in the food lane. And it was wide open. This was before Chrissy Teigen really stepped in and Mm. took over. So at that time, I wanted to do this thing called Nikki Street Eats. And I was showcasing the food trucks because this is when the food truck industry was really booming. So I did little short videos. I did a calendar. I did all of those things. And then I got- And then Tim stole your idea? No. I was like, no. I was like, Tim and I, like Tim and I connected because I love, like that's really what was getting me into any type of work was Mm. the fact that I had Nikki Street Eats and I did those things mm. and I just wanted to show that there were more more women eat than don't eat yeah. yeah and during that time it wasn't something everybody spoke about so freely like we do now and it's weird to even say that oh my god like I don't eat or I'm, I'm yeah. so no I'm not like that times, have changed, really, times have changed a lot especially yeah. with the mukbang uh, yeah. oh, right. genre it's, that it's got a, really big yeah and those are all fucking hot girls eating hot girls massive eating. amounts of food I got so shamed I was always by the snack table yeah the, always I got called the garbage table. can because I would eat I, I would eat everything and I Over worked seconds. out yeah, yeah I love loved it so oh, I didn't I, work out so, <laughs> <laughs> that was my life that's all I did so I but you know we had talked about wanting to be a food critic it was a model food critic so like the two yeah. go hand in hand with me I can't just eat I mean not, who contradict doesn't... each other right. really because like as far you're as supposed the, to be skinny yeah. Yeah. right as far as industry standards so yeah. I got into Nikki Streeties I had a team and then throughout time that's been one of the one of the projects that seems to be very enticing for everybody but the follow-through is not quite been there Mm -hmm. and Hmm. I refuse to put out whack shit when it comes to that and that's Mm -hmm. been my baby for a long time so Nikki Street Eats is just my passion project on the side so where do you find that oh it's on Instagram right now at Nikki Street Eats and I've been doing that and referencing it as much as possible I did not know that I'm gonna yeah I got a whole food page but it's yeah that's something that I step away from from time to time because you know Building the team, as you guys know, because mm. you guys have this whole production, is not easy to yeah. do. Yeah. And Especially over years. Yeah, yeah. and I'm yeah. not the person that can edit myself. I'm not very good at looking at my own videos and editing them. I will not do it. I don't mm. like watching myself. I don't listen to any of my own work. I don't watch any of my own work except photo shoots because I... I know that world. Yeah. But besides that, I really don't touch anything else. And I haven't found the proper team to make that happen yet. And every time I get close, something happens. My photog- my The guy that was going to do all my editing, we worked together. He got picked up by a huge company. Uh, so he got oh, taken away. The and good ones get taken. Oh, my God. So every time there's been something... Um, it got stopped. And so I know it's about timing. And timing mm-hmm. is everything. And yeah. I go back to it as much as possible. But... Eventually, I would like to have all of that taken That's care tight. of. That's yeah. tight. Yeah. Well, what if you vision. just got a contract like with another, with like a network or something to have something completely oh, different? I've had. Oh, oh. we've. Oh, mm. uh-huh. <laughs> I've, I've, we've done that before. Oh. We've tried. A lot of it is frustrating. Again, timing is everything. You know this. Yeah, indus- you know this industry. Mm-hmm. Timing is everything. People can love your idea. You can have full shows written out. I have seven shows of my own 
put to the side, mm-hmm. ready for when the right people come along. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of guys keep getting shows or like the most random celebrity will get a show. And I'm like, why does she get a show? <laughs> it's it's really there's a bunch of people that we don't see running stuff. But yeah. that's why you guys do this. And that's why we have yeah. other opportunities mm-hmm. with with social media. So for me, it's just finding the right time. And with the opportunities, again, the last three years has been spent working for somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling very stif- Like, I was stuck. There was no food where I was. There yeah. was you can only eat at the same six places. <laughs> I live next to cows. Like, legit, I'm oh, staring wow. at cows when oh, I leave shoot. my house. The options are few and far between, but okay. when I worked in the city... So now I'm going to convince you to move to Vegas There with we me. go. My, my <laughs> family, I have family in Vegas, and they want to Come move. to Vegas. Wanna- How do you feel about that whole... Max, uh, mass exodus out of California. Hawaii left Hawaii a long time ago and all moved to Vegas. So That's Vegas true. is the ninth island. All of the That's locals, true. all the locals all over there. How's it, auntie, uncle, cousins, <laughs> everybody that is continuing to tell me to come and see them. Are you Hawaiian? I am. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. I did hula and Tahitian dancing for did like 12 you? years. Yeah. I'm Hawaiian, Chinese, Filipino. That's amazing. I'm I'm Filipino and white, but yeah. <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah, before we got really drunk on our episode. I feel like I, yeah, I must have t- the drunkness must have taken away the. I did not catch that you were Hawaiian. That's so ah. cool. Yeah, I don't speak in my accent, but if you ever you see my mom and dad, I post them on my Instagram. You're like, oh wow, nice. that is your dad. Right what island? Yeah. Uh, Oahu. Oh, nice. But then I grew up in the Central Valley next to some cows, for real. Like, two stoplights, cows, <laughs> all of it. That's where I grew miss, up. Did you ever miss it? Or, like, because you, you used to go visit before this pandemic. Yeah. Like, did you ever feel like you wanted to live there? Big part of me. I would go back at, like, three months at a time. But if you want more than the island life, you you get pretty stuck. Mm-hmm. So I can only do a certain amount of time, I and then that. I have to leave. There's yeah. so I love many it, yeah. islanders in, the, uh, in Northern California. Yeah. I was That's blown true. away because I went yeah. to a Tahitian festival there once and I was like, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot of amazing halals in... Um, like San Jose. In, and, yeah. yeah. Everybody, Hawaii, if you're familiar, a lot of people don't know there's a huge, you know, homeless problem. Drugs mm-hmm. are a big issue. Domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Then you have just the cost of living is extremely high. Yeah. Education is not um, normally priority. So there's a lot of systems that, I mean, there's a lot of things that are broken out there. And our family wanted to take me off of the rock raise me where they can monitor me and make sure that I had the best opportunities possible because I mean I know a lot of my family isn't in the best positions and it is the lifestyle that you live out there it's completely different I would be a different person if I still live in Hawaii For sure. but I yeah. love it like I love my family I love that life that they live I want to go back occasionally but to live there and work like I don't know what I would do right like I, yeah, I, I can don't sense know that. Like, when I'm there, I'm just like, this is just for relaxing. There's no, there's no like, you got to get up and go and yeah. do something with yourself there. It's, yeah, it's just a relaxed. A lot ride. of beach towns are like that yeah. too. Yeah, a lot of my friends are in the nightlife industry, so that's dope. They get you know hospitality and all that. Mm-hmm. They get their money, but it's it's a dope dope lifestyle you wake up you're eating what you want you're going where you want you go to the beach yeah. you can hike mm-hmm. everybody's mentality is a little bit different first off and the designer clothes and shit out there because it's the taxes are different yeah. a lot of people shop out there it it's amazing but if you have other goals and ambitions you mm-hmm. have to split your time regardless yeah. mm-hmm. you can be successful there's a lot of educated people there's a lot to grow but you can't do all of that there. You have yeah. to leave at some point. Mm-hmm. And I am not ready to settle down in Hawaii because I will get I will end up pregnant. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm getting pregnant. I'm getting pregnant. Okay, you, so you, Las Vegas. You know what I mean? <laughs> Las Vegas. You is do all the eats. To, she's trying to convince Vegas. everyone to move to Vegas. Yeah, we've been trying for like a year or two years, but now it's seeming like more people she's are just jumping on board. Yeah, she's my too. Go without I'm us. supposed to go. I, actually one of my best friends lives in Vegas. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. She's been trying to convince me too. She's like, your rent is ridiculous I'm mm-hmm. like, i know mm-hmm. i know especially in norcal what, what about you guys are you gonna leave not me oh i'm not leaving not i'm these. stuck here for you a cali girl for probably for life but at least a solid five years because son because my son is mm-hmm. in a new school now i don't want to move him again that's very nice because yeah. i know some parents don't give a shit and they just be yeah <laughs> they just <laughs> that was my parents i didn't give a shit we just moved constantly um, i wanted to live in california i was so happy when i got to live here where uh, like when i'm from texas Texas. Yeah, I'm a Texas girl. Um, but I see the problems. I see the homeless issue. I see the taxes and the government the, of Cal- the, of the state of California's shit. Like, I see all of it. 
but I still feel like I love it so much. Yeah. Like there's something, I'm not even from here, but I feel like I love the city so yeah. much. Like even people like just driving through people that don't look like me, this is not my neighborhood. I just feel so much love for California and I don't know why or where mm. that came from. And it just feels sad for me to think about leaving. Mm -hmm. Like for I don't sure. want to. Yeah. I, I wanted to get, I wanted to get better. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. just You're not done with it, it. yet. Yeah. And I don't make enough money to where leaving uh will affect me tax wise like i'm not in a tax bracket that that it would really affect me so i'm like well i get why other people are leaving but for me there's not enough reason not i just yet. fucking love mm -hmm. i love sense. i love la i love it again mm -hmm. timing yeah because yeah. i i feel like two years ago we were thinking about it we weren't quite quite ready but yeah. now like i think it's on that that time especially like, if y'all's crypto hits yeah. <laughs> we were talking we were we were talking about, we, we were talking about that last time i saw him i was like okay so i have one solid coin what else are we yeah. doing what, <laughs> One coin. Yeah, I was like, I got one coin. One, one coin is expensive. What yeah, you mean? That's that's true. True. You have a whole coin. I have a whole crazy. coin. Good for you. A, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I have a coin plus a yeah, the little sprinkle, go. and I <laughs> diversify. Yeah, no. When did you get it? I got it when it was at uh, seven thousand, which was really Ooh, okay. It's it's low, but that's, still high. Mm -hmm. low, but it, but you're but still, still up, I think, right? Yeah, technically, yeah. yeah. We're on a sixty day run right now, being over ten thousand. I'm one of those that wakes up checks their coin checks Good. the news just gotta wait nice. wait just gotta out, wait, wait yeah mm -hmm. i was <laughs> we've talked about because joe was didn't he lose hella money in crypto <laughs> like, did he <laughs> joe honestly <laughs> honestly like that was a very contentious argument that we had yeah. in our relationship so we probably shouldn't get into it but okay. yeah he sunk so much money into it and i watched him and like i get that it's probably great investment like if you know the right ones like someone like steve mm, right. has done so much research where he knows where to put it when to buy and all that stuff but like we would fight so much over that i was just like you put so much god damn and not even diversifying just just dumped it all i was just like all right cool. i know because when we brought it up somebody said crypto and i had both of them in the room at the same time and you just see one go and you see steve and then he looks at me and i'm like i know i'm still with you mm -hmm. i was like i guess we're not gonna talk about this sensitive subject but i was like i got i got one he's like keep it i said good that's what i'm doing you're like talking over joe yeah, yeah. Whispering. we're he's whispering like, joe's like i bought the wrong one he yeah yeah, I'm just angry. Where I'm like, are we good? It's all oh, it's a lunch. It's a lunch yeah. break, and then the whole joke with Joe. I mean, have you you know the whole joke with yeah, Joe? Yeah, I I've seen it, and I'm like, okay, it's funny, whatever. I don't know. Everybody else has decided they took it and ran with it. I Wait, know. you gotta explain for the people that don't okay, know. Okay, that for the people that don't know, <laughs> they have tried to put Joe and I in a relationship because I think that he has oh, had it. They because they're to, both yeah. single yeah. people, right? And they're right. In a, that's what our fan base does. Like our yeah. audience, yeah. They like if there's two single people right they're gonna be together so like all the guy the single males that we've had on yeah. our show it's like oh i'm with the i'm definitely, with them you definitely i definitely want to fuck them yeah. for sure <laughs> and i'm just like okay this is funny for entertainment we'll go with it yeah <laughs> yeah so. and the whole thing on no chaser is that i'm not looking and i make that very clear i'm not yeah. interested i'm not looking it's same not, it's not you <laughs> yeah. it's it's me i yeah. don't want it you yeah. could be the most amazing person not now like yo stop trying yeah so when we were having a conversation about it like you said they just ship whoever's there yeah. like i apparently have been in multiple relationships with every guest that yeah yeah totally on the show Dude, even yep. within the married people like oh no yeah oh yeah they're God. like tiffany <laughs> wants to have sex with bart yeah, yeah. there's uh, yeah. this like huge sex conspiracy that i yeah. want to fuck oh. bart so badly so <laughs> we're like, like cartoon why? character or we're just like you know characters in a movie or yeah, something. yeah so sure. everybody's like moving their little pieces however yeah. they want yeah. so so the joke is is that him and i really would never it's the dream would be to live in a duplex like you have one side I have yeah. one side and we just hang out like we want nothing else to do with each other <laughs> yeah. besides yeah. like hey I think your mushrooms are pretty cool do you want to go ride a bike today like that's the extent <laughs> it's of it it's like being cousins yeah <laughs> but everybody but everybody just runs with it so I'm like fuck it I'll, I'll take this let's go and I'm, I'm pretty sure I make him feel extremely uncomfortable <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that's possible for but Joe. But he, he's very, haven't you noticed he's really quiet when I when I do my little stuff on the show? He doesn't talk much to me. He just kind of sits there. And yeah. he, just, he just sits there. Because so I'd be like, right? And he's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> he doesn't know how to respond. <laughs> he doesn't know how to respond. <laughs> he's probably thinking, like, I really don't want you, but I guess we're doing this right now. <laughs> no, I think he I just highly feels, doubt that. I think he just put, <laughs> he's he's feels put on the spot. Yeah. 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 He's Which, like, I don't know. He doesn't know how to banter. Like, he's never a middle person. He's either all or nothing. So, like, he, with his anger, all or none with his romance all or none like so if so he doesn't know how to play like in the middle that's, so he's just like 
that's uh, what makes it great because yeah, since funny. everybody else has shipped it then yeah. i'm like cool i'm just gonna really make you feel uncomfortable yeah. every time i'm on and you've yeah. become my talking point point. And, and when you're looking for things to talk about you go back to what you know right <laughs> do you know that I, so i'm the manager of the channel so i review all of the videos <laughs> so you see me yeah. hitting on so them all I, the time. I, watch, I watch so i basically i have to watch all the videos before they come out um like just as a final production step yeah. or whatever so i'm watching them and i'm laughing and honestly i'm just like do you see his face he's just like <laughs> <laughs> okay guys yeah. 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 He just he just yeah he just doesn't really say anything yeah. so i'm like cool everybody else has ran with it so i was like give me the ball i'm going for the touchdown <laughs> because they'll get tired of it funny a bit. like selling point they'll to, get to click on this video because nikki's flirting with J- joe, joe you know like. and then you watch and you're like I don't think he likes yeah. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you just look so uncomfortable i'm like see you have to consent people just yeah. can't force yourself on everybody. Force people together. <laughs> Make a kiss, right? I, I think like, I think you know married people. Married people and um, fans that watch have the same thing in common. Where we're like two single people. Make them kiss. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> make a, like our last oh, guest, yeah. our last guest <laughs> that, that we Jess. had on, they were like, Jessam. kiss, yeah, now kiss." Yeah. yeah, they created a ship name, and I'm like, "You're single." Oh my God, she's you guys single. had a name. Tip yeah, did. I created it. Tip's Jessam. acting like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> okay. it's fun. How it's do you fun. deal with it? Cassica. Oh God! I just get really <laughs> uncomfortable, and I'm like, "What do I do now?" I don't know. Uh, similar I'm just like, stop. I'm just Joe's like, feeling. stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Like, leave me yeah, we'll stop. Especially like, not necessarily Cassim, but like sometimes like they'll ship me with the most random person, or like I guess it makes sense. But then I'm like, y'all really don't know that I really don't even like that person. <laughs> so it's awkward. I think if you actually were to get together, we'd be like, whoa, that. Works. Yeah, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> We were just like, kiss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody on the show that you thought could possibly be someone you were interested in and never we expressed We've only had it? like yeah, two male like, guests. Like we haven't had enough male, like single males. Your, on any of your shows? Ah. Oh, I've never been in the same room, but I w- have considered dating some people that have been on a show around Ooh. us maybe uh, not our uh, show uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, someone uh, actually someone actually shipped it in the comments a long time ago but i'm not gonna say <gasps> who it is Ooh, Ooh, did they clue. ship it did you see it and secretly go i was like yeah but only one person thinks that <laughs> and you're going thumbs, did you thumbs it up <laughs> no <laughs> was it your comment Wait, maybe i did thumbs up i can't remember <laughs> no, it wasn't my comment but i was just like it was really random too because it wasn't connected like there, I, like we weren't in a video together and no one said our names mm. together but it's just the fact that like in some way, we're connected through now like, you guys a, like have several homework. degrees. Mm. Yeah. Now you guys have homework. Someone Go connected figure us it through out. several degrees and said, oh, they should <laughs> That date. sounds fun. And I was like, yeah. Having a crush on somebody sounds fun. Oh, not a real crush because I don't. I honestly don't even know him, but I was just like, oh, he's cute. I no, I mean, just is. like we live vicariously married yeah. and yeah. Oh, fans married. were just like <laughs> vicariously like we're not going to be in that crush phase ever again. So like just watching other people. Right. Be, is, like, that makes sense. I don't know fun. if I yeah. date an entertainer though. So yeah, know. yeah, that makes sense. I want to get into the crush phase again. I want to have a crush on somebody. That's cute. Aww, I'm you know? still not even ready for that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't say I was ready for it. No, you're just looking forward to the next. Next time yeah. it happens. Well, just let us know so we can watch. It's always so yeah. disappointing though. After like, if it doesn't work out, it's so goddamn disappointing. <laughs> I'm gonna call you. I'm like, it didn't work out. Well, speaking oh, of calling thing. us, call us anytime. Yeah, this girl. hour flew by. Did. Why did you come back? Why did you do that? Like, it made it. We do, I feel like I want to talk forever. <laughs> I know we need like multiple exactly. episodes. Find Nikki on all of her platforms. Go to Instagram. Go to Nikki Street Eats. Check me on Twitch Check now. On Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Twitch. Joining. Twitch. Wake up with Nikki. Yeah. Waking Blades. Wake oh, that's blades. cute. I try to throw blades in as much I shit know, as possible. I love puns. That's the coolest last name ever. A woman with puns. I love it. <laughs> and then also, of course, rate us five stars on iTunes. It helps us out a lot. And also, uh, thumbs this video up so it helps with the algorithm if comment. you're watching on YouTube. And le- leave us a comment. Yeah. Let us know like what you've been up to, what you want to ask Nikki for the next time she comes yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Presumptuous. <laughs> and we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Thank you.